Hello there, internet. Mogwai here, and I got another Legends of Runeterra video for you guys today. And today we're gonna play some Hecarim because we are original, and you know we embrace innovation and all that good stuff. I know I am hilarious. Why are we actually playing Hecarim though? Well, the reason is myself, and I'm pretty sure the vast majority of you watching this video are expecting Hecarim to receive a significant nerf in this upcoming patch. Today is when we're gonna be receiving the patch notes. This video may go up after the patch notes have been released. I'm not sure exactly when it happens, but you can also expect a video of me talking about said patch notes today because it's gonna be a very, very, the biggest patch up until now regarding balance changes. And your boy here is, in my opinion, in the opinion of many, is gonna 100% be nerfed, right? So I want to showcase him and his degeneracy in all of his glory before the downfall as we're going to feature Lucian's Undying yet again. This is a deck that I showcased on the channel once before and I even wanted to share it more and it is actually upgraded from the prior version. I took uh, quite a bit of inspiration from Zedalot who played an Undying deck with Hecarim uh, in the... AFK streamer tournament, right? And I really liked his inclusion of single combat. This is the big inspiration from Zed a lot. I think single combat with the Undying is absolutely outstanding. And it also happens to work really well with Lucian and Senna, as in a pinch, I can use single combat uh, on Senna in response to some sort of removal to level up Lucian in just one play like that. The fact that I can uh, utilize this to potentially trigger the death of the Undying and also eliminate the unit for just two mana is absolutely massive. And this is a card that will really uh, benefit significantly from uh, the Undying gaining more and more stats. The bigger the Undying, the more powerful a single combat will be. And it just reaches a point in which this card becomes extremely cost efficient and overall super reliable as well. Very easy to always leave two mana floating around. And as your opponent commits to a big play, you can single combat. And there's so many lines of plays that you disrupt with this that it's it's just, it's incredible. So definitely a big fan of this inclusion. And this, you know, it may just seem, we're talking a lot about one card, but this really does make a difference. And it makes this deck that much better than it was before. And it was already a really solid deck. Uh, prior to this so the rest of the build is uh, changed ever so slightly as you guys can see because we've included three copies of single combat we've taken out uh, vile feast and dropped it down to two we also took out uh, withering whale and uh, we are running two rasa the sunder instead of one rasa and one commander ladros uh, i think rasa is very underrated right now. I think this card is still really powerful and the fact that people don't play around Rasa anymore is an absolute blessing because this motherfucker puts in the work. Regardless of the matchup, he is a bomb. Obviously, one mana later than before, but we all know how amazing Raza was prior, right? Still a fantastic play to go for at eight mana, and we're gonna surprise a lot of fools with this, you know, I, I call them fools, sorry for the disrespect, but fools, fools, all of them. We're gonna surprise them with Raza, as uh, yeah, this, this card should see more play. I think it uh, fell under the radar and people just forgot about it existing, and uh, I think that is a mistake. I also think Commander Ladros in the right shell is also really good right now. But people, you know, just don't don't play them. They, they just fell into obscurity, and I don't think it's fair for the cards, as they are still excellent. We're running a one-off of Atrocity. I like this a lot in this deck. It can help us clear out a game, close the gap with a little bit of extra damage that we need to go for. It works really well with a beefed up on dying, and as a one-off, it's just really solid. As in a pinch, it can also be a, a bit of an awkward source of removal, but it's flexible. It's nice, and I like it as a one-off, alongside the Ruination, which has heavy implications, not only in mid-range sorts of matchups, but also, for example, against Ezreal Combo Frost, which, spoilers, we're going to be running into a lot in today's <laughs> gameplay. This card can be a nice way to clean up all them Elnux, and it's just really clean as a one-off, especially the fact that it synergizes with the Undying makes it that much better, right? And that is the deck right there. The rest of the deck is pretty much the same as before, but I do think this is a significantly stronger version than the one prior and i got some gameplay to back that up as we are climbing in the top 100 masters rank and you'll see how far i make it so 
Having that said, that is basically the deck tech, and I'm happy. I'm keeping these under five minutes. Like, go me, even though now that I'm talking about it, it has been over five minutes, but whatever. It counts under five minutes, and yeah, I'm gonna stop talking. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the games. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. It helps me out. I'm not sure exactly how, but I've been told it does, so I would appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that was all day. Enjoy the matches. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, let's do this. 800, okay. <laughs> so, if we lose this guy, I think we're gonna drop like 400 ranks. So yeah, all on the line from the get-go. Just how I like it, I guess. Uh, we're facing a uh, Ezreal Elnuk deck, which means I wanna drop the Black Spear. Um, well, Lucian into Senna is very tempting to keep. I think in this matchup, these cards are, like, especially Senna. Uh, this is a difficult one, because I want to keep the Curse Keeper. This may sound crazy, but I think I want to mulligan away Lucian and Senna. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna keep him. It's, it's, uh, it's a bit iffy, because Mystic Shot deals with them, so they're very easily answered. So it's unlucky that I'll have both of them on the board at the same time, which is why I'm, you know, a, a bit against playing them. Let's see. Don't get in my way. Don't get in my way. So basically, I definitely do expect him to go down. Yeah, I, I think there's a legit argument. I think there's a legit, legit, legit argument for dropping them in this matchup. And uh, I think I should have gone with my gut there. Uh, we can try to play Senna now. Curse Keeper is also interesting. But I may as well try to go for damage. I'm what nightmares fear. We could see an archer. Or just a thermo beam. Alright. That's a pretty uh, expensive answer for Sen anyways. I'm, I am rather content with that, but I... I definitely would have liked to... Hmm. I'm gonna take a big hit here. Yeah, uh, I should have gone with my gut. Like, I, I'm still dwelling a little bit over that mistake earlier on. I may as well uh, get a little bit proactive here. I'm gonna go for a single combat. And uh, I guess I'm gonna lose the game. <laughs> Remember the fallen! Alright, well, ain't that neat. Okay. We got Elnucked. <sighs> I am not afraid. All right, taking eight damage to the face against an Ezreal deck. Feels good, man. Drop your boy, and These old eyes still see far. we're gonna see if we can get a, a decent hit off on him. <laughs> we're so far behind, it's ridiculous. Alright. I'm gonna go with this line of play, so like, I have uh, enough blockers here. Renation, there's neat. Uh, maybe I, I can surprise him with Rasa. I think I may be able to surprise him with Rasa.
see if he opts to attack. A true Fralurian welcome. In Avarosa's name. Such naivete. It's hard to believe my button doesn't have a... Uh, uh, get excited to finish this off with like a couple of mystic shots as well. But we can always hope. Maybe he doesn't have it. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this now. Because he shouldn't he doesn't have a frostbite that can deal with this for two mana unless he picked up a flash freeze with that, that card right there. <laughs> oh my god, I can't. I I'm I'm not gonna lie, I cannot believe I won that game. Uh several things to take away from that. That that is that is crazy that I won that match. I, I don't feel like, I was so close to conceding, I, I, like, that's, how, how did he not have a way to finish me? That's crazy. So, basically, first of all, I should have gone with my gut. I should have mulligan the way Lucian and Senna in an Ezreal uh, matchup. Any sort of pilt over control matchup, really, where they have, uh, you know, get excited and mystic shots. Keeping your, keeping Senna and Lucian is not really, like, for that matchup, you want the Undying, and you want the Curse Keepers, right? That's what you want to go with, so I should have gone with my gut in the Mulligan phase there, and I should have gotten rid of Lucian yeah, and Senna, and uh, another thing is, you know, Elnux happened, like, my opponent got a massive Elnux swing, and I thought I just auto-lost, but I guess, you know, all that luck that he got with the Elnux there, he didn't get finding the, uh, <laughs> the direct damage, so I'll, I'll take it, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Hopefully we uh we learned our lesson and we mulligan better this time around. And look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna drop these two. Uh, single combat is neat. Like I'm. I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm fine with drawing another one because this is good to like trade into. You know because Ezreal has. Not only the Elnux, but also the Archers. There's a lot of neat things that I can single combat into, right? But I do want a mulligan to find stuff like the Undying or or other enablers. I love seeing Glimpse Beyond and Curse Keeper, though. Glimpse Beyond is a great way to slow down Ezreal's level up. And Curse Keeper is just fantastic in this matchup. We want, we want last breath units. We want to be able to outvalue our opponent's reactive game plan. And Rasa was just absolutely brutal that game too. Like, Rasa is so underrated now, it's crazy. Rasa's still an amazing card, man, I'm telling you. I, I may end up playing like a lot, after, you know, if the patch is proper and we see like some, some uh, you know, well-deserved nerfs, I may dwell into or delve into English. Look out for oh. oh, okay. Alert the villain. I'll take it. I will always take that. Cleared a, a, a pesky blocker right there. There we go. That's more like it. Not and ready. Mom spaghetti. Um, do I take the three damage from this thing? I don't. The ready. I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna take it. I would have taken like a, a drive pass there. Like I, I was trying to use my the initiative system to like maybe lure my opponent into passing and uh, preventing the damage. But I, I wanted to play the Undying there. Uh, otherwise, I would have floated my mana anyways. Like most of it, at least. 
We have uh, another undying here. And uh, I believe I I like that very much. Because we still have single combat and or glimpse beyond enabled. I got ways to find me mushrooms. You. I may want to single combat this. I believe I do. I, I, I want to prevent this damage. We could see another Brittle Steel. Get, getting rid of the Archer is... It's really neat. Like, Undying with single combat is just so great. Well, it's to be expected. God damn, dude. God damn. Well, we're diving down to 10. We may we may just ruination here. Put yep. on me mask, secure me tail, start the day. Yep. Clutch, clutch relation right there. Uh, we're still at 10 though, but his Ezreal is, is a, a bit away from, from being able to uh, deal with us here. A true Falyorian welcome. I'm gonna go ahead and vile feast this. Get a little bit of health back too. That's always nice. As we will using the butcher here. These undyings you miss me. are putting in the work. Okay. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. Sure. Making the dead. Dead. That's annoying. Sentinels. Alright, so he has to do something because right now we're threatening lethal. You know, even though his Ezreal is close to leveling up at this point, I mean, two away, he's only got three, like, actual cards in his hand. No sweat. We're going for it, forcing him to have like a... Basically, he, he needs a frostbite. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> there we go. They don't know what they're up against. Uh, I, I think you don't know what you're up against. I think you're dead. <laughs> ah, get wrecked. All right, so we have several like outs there. Like we had Rasa to finish off the... Uh, the Ezreal right there, and Undyne proving to be an absolute monster versus control decks, which is why I really like this archetype a lot. Uh, it, it it can be molded to, it, it's really, I see it as, as one of the most fine-tuned mid-range decks in, in the game. I just, I think the Undyne puts in a, like, I love, like, that's one of the things that I learned from Zed a lot, man. I love the Undyne with single combat. It's so damn good. Is it... is it just Ezreal Day? Is that what today is? I guess it's Ezreal Day. We're gonna keep the Glimpse Beyond, the Curse Keeper, and the Mark of the Isles. Mark of the Isles is really strong in this matchup as it can enable us to bypass removal and push for damage. 
Ruination also proves to be really, really good here as well, as it is a nice answer to the L Nocturne. Especially considering I'm, I'm, I'm going first and he's going second, that means he won't be able to attack the same turn he plays the L Nox, which gives me an, a chance to Ruination them. We're gonna play the, uh, the Cursed Keeper. We see Lucian there, we're gonna drop him. There's a chill in the air. There's a chill in the air. There's a lot of things that can happen here. You can play an archer. Like, I I, I don't mind. Like, I always play Lucian into this. The world's a big place. Let's see all of it. Interesting. Death is trimming her claws. Interesting. I'm gonna pass. I don't miss. I could go Mark of the Owls into single combat. What about this? This feels neat. We have Mark of the Owls. Like, if he connects, he's gonna be able to hit that anyways. Like, there's several plays that I could go for, but I'd rather I'd rather not stack my two cards first. Like, not, not go for, like, two cards to remove one. Like, I'm gonna go for the single combat first. My opponent responds with, like, a removal or a source of... of a frostbite, for example. Yeah, that's super fine. We can't be brittle steeled anymore. We kill off uh, one of the Ezreals. I feel like I could hit this, but I, I I don't I don't need to at the same time. I would like to go for you though. Just to refuel a little bit. There we go. We're gonna pass here. Alright, there's a troop of Elnux. Fortunately for us, though, it's nowhere near as big or mean looking. And we may just go for the ruination here. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Exactly! Beautiful. That's another game. That's another game which Ruination just completely denies the Elnux. Like, you have to play Ruination. Like, you actually have to play it, as, at least as a one-off. That was that was pretty amazing. All right, let's drop you. Even though uh, he could have a a thermogenic beam, and we can counter that with uh, Mark of the Isles. A chill in the air. That's that's fine though. That's the power of Hecarim. I'll protect the villages. Like yeah, we can take three damage here. It's fine. Look out for reavers. We clear a portion of his board. I go away, Stefan, in mushrooms. I will trade, I will trade, um, Hecarim into that, though. If he opts to go for, like, a Brittle Steel to preserve his Chump Wump, then we can react with Rasa. Rasa can still. Hmm. Rasa is still solid. Oh, 
The fearsome is really, really impactful, as even if he does develop a chump blocker now. Okay. Not what I was expecting. Okay, so four out of eight. All right. All right. Let's go with you. We're gonna start making use of these black spears to clear the way. They're out there. I'll spot them. There's a scent in the air. Where I react to his play skill, this way we don't give up initiative as we go for the Black Spears. As the, the, the initiative will go to us. We clear the two fearsome blockers so we can just go all in. There was an argument for going for a Mark of the Isles onto this preemptively. Because it would play around Brittle Steel. Interesting. But if he has Brittle Steel now, then. Ready the torches. But then again, you know. I could go for lethal here. So what stops this? If I if I if he had a mystic shot, he would have gone for it now. But if he had a brittle steel, he also would have gone for it now. I don't think he has an answer. I don't think he has an answer. I think if he had something, he would have gone for it. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, sometimes you, you gotta read, right? Like, it's important to play around cards. But it's also important to get into the head of, the of your opponent and be like, okay, so if he had a brittle steel, and there's a 7-3 attacking him, he goes for the brittle steel. If he has a mystic shot, and he has a 3-2, you go for the mystic shot. Like, maybe he was, he was like, waiting for me to go for a mark. Like, a, a, a good player can wait for the mark of the Isles, but at the end of the day, like, it's less likely, right? Especially, like, a Brittle Steel. Like, a Brittle Steel, any sort of, like, Frostbite effect, because of the burst speed, you, you don't wait for mark of the Isles for that. So, yeah. Made a call. Got it right. A 666 fourth Ezreal in a row. Sometimes I feel like just reality is a. I don't know, man. Life is a simulation. Like, days like these, I just think life is one big simulation. This is how I'm gonna keep Lucian uh, in my hand, despite the matchup, because I have a Mark of the Isles. And I'm going. I'm going. I'm attacking second, right? Which means I can go Lucian here. Don't get in my way. Don't get in my way. Burn away the shadow. Six damage. Six damage is no joke. Six damage goes a long way. So, I'm gonna take it. I love that ruination as well. We weren't expecting fallers. She's gonna be so happy. I could go for a Mark of the Isles here. A proactive Mark of the Isles. Honestly, I think I like that. Remember the fallen. Because this way I can also develop her. And while you know Elnux are coming, we can we can deal with them. Oh! They did not play Elnux. I am confused. All right, I'm gonna drop this. The Undying. Because the Undying is the kind of shit we want in this matchup. How, how is... Okay, Ezreal's only looking at one. That's neat. We're developing quite the board. Our opponent is halfway dead. Um, barring the uh, the Barkeeper. Or the Tavern Keeper. The, the friendly, the friendly ta uh, bar guy. He doesn't have any healing. And that is very, very relevant. Uh... 
ruination is pretty attractive here. I kind of just want to... I think I want to drop Lucian, though. There's a kill in the air. I'm going to play Lucian. Instead of going for an open attack, I'm going to drop this. Okay. Ah, Senna. Senna, you came too late, Senna. We strike. Yeah, we go for this now. I, uh, That's fine. For Reavers. Okay. You still get some nice damage on him? We spread out with these undines. We're still at, at full health. So we're, we're doing pretty damn good. Uh, he passes right off the bat. That's very, very interesting. I could just go for like another. Why not go for another ground occur? I could go for a vile feast, but unfortunately. Okay. I was expecting him to attack there, but he didn't. Excuse you. We're threatening lethal here. As well, go for it now. <laughs> Ruination with your dying is so clean. It's so damn clean. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that value, son. Still at full health. Still got so many Elnox coming my way, though. God damn, son. Uh. I'm gonna go with Vile Feast into double. Yeah. Fresh tracks. Can't afford to miss. Making the dead deader. We're gonna play Senna as a blocker. Winter take you. I could play Hecarim here, but I think we definitely gotta go for this. Yep. Not so fast. We are thinking quite the hit here. Uh. All right, three on three. Try to even the odds, or uneven the odds. <laughs> All right. Stay back. Save the homestead. We are running out a little bit out of gas. Okay, that vial is actually a really neat top deck. That vile fizz is actually really neat because I, I was running out of gas, but I, I do have like endless value with these, which is just what's so great about them. But this this vile feast is just clean, absolutely clean. <laughs> Let's go round two. 
chill in the air. Round two, baby. The power of the undying. And and, and Hecker. <laughs> I will admit, Ed Hecker. Alright, let's see you stop this. I know it may seem like it was all Hecarim, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to give, you know, a bit of a shout out to my, my bro, the Undying here, who just kept coming again and again. And uh, enabled us to defeat Frostbite Ezreal for the fourth time in a row. Is that, is that what this video? <laughs> is that what this video is? <laughs> Just against Ezreal? I mean, it, it, it's an interesting matchup, I guess. You know? You, you can learn something from it, I guess. <laughs> guys, 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 guys. We got... A non-Ezreal matchup. Calm down. Do not picnic, but it's happening. It's happening. All right, so this is interesting. I'm actually gonna keep this hand, even though it is a little bit slow. I do believe access to Glimpse Beyond in single combat will, will go a long way with the Undying. It could be slow though. This hand could prove to be too slow. We'll see. I like all these cards, but not having an early curve can be a little bit devastating. But, we don't see turn one bird, and that is nice. We don't like turn one bird. We'll be floating this mana. I've got your back. We can't block with the Undyne, but we can use it to single combat. My shield is yours. Alright, so... We have several options here. We can take the hit. We can drop Senna to try to... train into that. I think playing Senna is important. But then again, uh, if I'm going to start investing in the Undying... I'm gonna go that. My steel is yours. Six damage is quite a bit. I'm gonna take the hit. I'm gonna use my, my health as a resource here. And I'm, I'm gonna get my game plan going. Lucian is neat, but I, I am gonna go with the Chronicler of Ruin. So many, so much He did nothing that turn, which is interesting. Uh, we, we left ourselves a little bit wide open there. I'm not sure if this is the best uh, approach that we've had. So we have a, a heavy amount of attackers coming at us here. Which means we definitely will want to be using single combat. If I drop Lucian though, unfortunately, it won't be... Making the dead deader. It won't work out for us. I need to find a way to... Honor guide me. The question is, do I use my life as a resource even more? I don't think I can afford that. I don't think I can afford that. Even though I would love to level up Lucian, I, I don't think I can afford to take more damage. Mm -hmm. It's to be expected. I want to spread out these undines. There's a chill in the air. A chill in the air. Definitely want to play Hecarim here. Soldier, to me.
I mean, the thing about this is that if he opens attack with Sithria, I can obviously block with Lucian. But I, I, I had to go for the the spread out attack there with Ekram. Save your worlds. We speak with blades. I'll bring them peace. My steel is yours. On go. Obviously, if Rasa, if we had old Rasa, this would be amazing, <laughs> but we don't. So we gotta go for this block. Uh, this, this is really intense. Interesting. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna... This will be quick. We don't have to worry about random stuff like uh like only other single combats can work out here. We're gonna go for the glimpse beyond to draw. Okay, that's neat. That's neat. That ravenous butcher draw is fantastic. We're flooding the board and, and uh, threatening lethal. Yep. Yep, got him. Got him, baby. Got him. That was neat. This deck is strong, man. This deck is just straight up strong. I didn't get to showcase, like, you know, leveled up Lucian much, uh, even though there are some neat tricks with it, because I ran into four Ezreal Frost combo decks, and I, I, I can't, like, I can't level up Lucian when he, you know, we're facing a matchup in which my opponent runs, like, three Mystic Shots, three Thermogenic Beams, and three fucking get excited, right? But in, in mid-range matchups and, and stuff, like Lu Lucian, can really put in the massive work in this deck. And overall, I mean, we just showcased how good of this deck this is. Like, this is just really, really damn solid. Obviously, Hecarim is really powerful, and uh, in a way, you know, like I said, I I, I do want to say goodbye to Hecarim, but I also want to showcase, I mean, goodbye. He's still going to be good, I think, after. I mean, we are all assuming that he's getting nerfed, but in before, he doesn't get nerfed, and this video doesn't make any sense. Regardless, uh, we did some solid climbing today. And yeah, that's like over 40 minutes. So I think that'll do. Very fun deck. Definitely will be exploring this archetype uh, more so after the patch and the nerfs. I do expect Shadow Owls to have been taken several hits here. Uh, if, you know, everything is going smoothly, I should have uploaded a video talking about the patch notes as well. So you'll be getting two videos today. Uh, I'm not sure if the patch notes will be before or after this video. Maybe after. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the games. <laughs> Basically, uh, Hecarim and Lucian versus Zed. I'm sorry, Zed. Easy. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. Have a soul day. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow.